Hello, this is Neil from masterpaintingnow.com. The link is in the description, so check it out. I have hundreds of free videos, actually I have like over 300 now, of tutorials you can learn from. So in this tutorial we're going to learn how to do characterization or a caricature drawing. And one of the easiest ways to learn how to do caricature drawings is there's three, there's three basic things that make up style. And that comes down to exaggeration, distortion, and minimalizing or simplification. So simplification can come in two different ways, or minimalizing rather come in two, two different ways. One is simplification. Simplification would be taking the shapes and making them more cartoony and making them like solid, for example. That's simplification. So you took that very complex eyebrow and you made it simple. There's also like minimalizing the sense of taking the size down or sizing it down. So making the eyes smaller than they actually are, things like that. Making the teeth smaller than they actually are. If someone has really small teeth, you might want to accentuate that and really make it small. I guess you can also call that exaggerating, but it seems kind of strange. Or exaggerating the smallness, and it sounds kind of strange to word it that way, but you can word it that way. So then you want to think about what on the person is already kind of exaggerated. Do they have a big nose? You know, there is a nose very prominent, so you might want to exaggerate the nose and make it even bigger. Um, Let's say the person, like Roseanne Barr or something, let's say the person has uh, big lips or mouth, like Mick Jagger, you might want to make his, you might want to really emphasize the lips and make him huge. Um, Aerosmith, make his mouth huge. And, and Jack Nicholson, his, eye, his eyebrows and his eyes, this is what he's known for. So you might want to really accentuate this part here and really, really kind of bring it out and make it either um, more prominent, make his eyes like bigger, like in this, or, or just the eyebrows bigger or more pronounced. Um, and also his head uh, is kind of large, so you might want to exaggerate this and really bring this out here, you know, make it big like that. So now his head's even bigger, and you can even get more crazy with it and go, okay, well, let's make his head a lot bigger, and let's go way out here with it like this. And so you're coming down with it like that, and then his hair is kind of wild, and so we can make it even more wild. Right, so make his hair even more wild than it, what, what it already was. And start, you know, so what we can do is you can trace over photo, and this way it helps you to get the idea of how far can you take a character. Because if, you, if you're drawing it from just looking at it and you're not tracing over it, what will happen is you're gonna, it's not going to look much like the character, and you're going to think it's because you weren't drawing it good enough, and that might not be the case. If you just simply draw a character, just trace over it, try this first. Take a character's face, trace over it, simplification, don't add any of the shadow or anything like that. You're going to go, hey, it doesn't really look like the person. It's really the shadow of the character that makes the character. Um, the shadows, the way the shadows fit on the face, that's going to really distinguish that character. Uh, and so you can test that out by just tracing. I mean, you'll, you'll probably recognize who it is, but it doesn't have the total character yet. It's only when you add the shading where you really get that kind of realistic kind of character look. And you can still add that shading in a more simplified cartoon way, too. The other thing um, that you want to do is, so when you draw your character, is if you over exaggerate something too much you might lose the character so even if you drew it well by looking at it you might go wow it doesn't look like the person and think it's your fault but really you just exaggerate something too much let's say or minimize something too much or distorted something too much and that's what you that, that's how you lost the character look and not and not not by any other fault so by tracing over character you know hey I'm tracing the character so if it doesn't look like the character very much it's because you know I went too far with something I took something too far Also, do you want to make it, you know, one thing you can do is like maybe his mouth too. So one thing I exaggerate so far is his head. What I, what I might also want to exaggerate then uh, is his eyebrows. So I might want to bring his eyebrows way up here and uh, start down here and kind of come up here with them like this. In which case then I also want to take that first wrinkle like this and then take the second wrinkle from over here and kind of bring it down to the middle of his head, maybe even bring it down more. So keep the likeness of the character. Do the same thing with this eyebrow. Make it, I'm making them bigger, and I'm situating how they look more. I'm accentuating that more. Might want to bring these little spikes of the eyebrow more. And then he has a little bit of a wrinkle here. And then let's take that bigger wrinkle and kind of come more straight with it. Kind of have a few more wrinkles out here. And kind of come off like that. Right, then I want to keep the eyeballs pretty much the same. His eyeballs are a pretty distinguished mark. I don't want to ruin his likeness by screwing with his eyeballs too much. If 
I did anything with them, I might even make them more beadier. If I were to if I were to screw with them at all, that's probably what I would do. And I'm not even worried about shading right now. I'm just gonna kind of add in the lines where they should be. I think for shading, I might just do like a cartoony type shading, which is gonna be very very simplified. So I'll add some minimalism. And that's one of the styles you can have. Is that minimalist approach? Okay, so at this point you can see what I'm doing. There's no reason really to explain anything. I'm just going over the tracing over the character. I'm going to take this char this color here because I do want that to be. I mean, I'll make it flat, a flat color. But I do want that color to be there, like so. Maybe kind of do a little quick, couple shapes here where I know that light and dark and stuff is going to be and so again by doing this and it, one of the things I could have done is I could have really exaggerated his m smile I could have brought it way out here more made it big made his cheeks come out more like that and I have to come in and that might actually look kind of cool it's still not I'm not too far ahead that I, I can't do that, I could still do that. And so I'm thinking about just drag not changing the shape of the mouth any, just kinda of giving that because he's known for the Joker when he played the Joker. And so I'm thinking, what if I take that idea, you know, that the fact that he played the Joker and I kinda Damn freaking drivers. It's so annoying. So I take his cheek and I pull it out more because I'm going to pull his smile out to out here. Bring his cheek out a little bit more then. For this part here, I'm just going to kind of keep it very simple. Since I'm not going for a realistic approach because that would take too long in this video, I'm going to go for more of a cartoon approach. I'm not going to draw all the lines of the teeth either. Even with a, you know, a realistic drawing, you wouldn't do that. You would shade to get the teeth. I'm going to go, ahead and I'm going to go to a proper brush here, pen brush. Oh, I can easily add the minimalist approach here. Style to the coloring. So if we go ahead and turn that off, we can see that actually retains a lot of his likeness even though there's no shading in it yet. Then I'll make a new layer and this is where I'll go and add shading. So I'll take like a color like this, maybe a little bit darker. Have it on my flat thing. I'm thinking that color maybe should be a little bit darker, so I'll use this brush actually. Give me a little bit more control over the, the darkness of it.
just to do something really quick like just to show that the shading it really does add a lot to character so even though a lot of this is just going to be done really quite really quick and just like blocked in we're still going to see how how much different it's going to look when we have that shading in there the shading really does add a lot even though it's painted in a very quick quick like way Anyway, so there's a bunch of other tutorials I'm trying to decide on that I want to work on next. Uh, or not tutorials, but courses. And one of them was, you know, of course, the cartoon course. So, cartoon on drawing cartoons from everything. A really detailed course on drawing cartoons, which is really all about style. So, it would really be also be a detailed course about how to develop your own style. And yes, you can develop your own style, and there there are ways you can go about it. It's it all comes down to learning about minimalism and exaggeration, which is mostly what you use in characterization is exaggeration, and then of course distortion. In learning these principles, you can actually develop your own style once you have a good grasp of those those principles and how they make up style and you can see different cartoons and stuff and anyway it would it'd really take a whole course to really get the you know the concept really nailed in stone to where it's undoubtedly showing you how to develop your own style to help you develop your own style and also it would show you how to draw you know any kind of cartoon and all kinds of cartoons and so it show you how to be a cartoonist as well and part of that would be you know characterization would be part of the course so there wouldn't be a separate course for characterization in this case caricatures but it would be part of that whole course so that's one course I was thinking about another course I was thinking about was uh, drawing and painting hair so it'd be a whole course on how to draw and paint all kinds of hair and how, how to do it and you know you know how my courses are I, I actually teach I don't just draw and like right now I'm kinda like there's not a whole lot to teach here I kinda already discussed the concepts um, unless I do a big you know course on it whatever but as far as just for this little tutorial I kind of already discussed the things that are important for it, and that is, you know, you want to think about the character, how he looks, and, and exaggerate those features that make that character. So, you know, they have big lips, small lips, you know, and exaggerate those features a little bit or a lot, and you get a characterization of that character. That's how you do a caricature. And then it's an end for practice to make sure you're doing it right and you're, you're, you're accentuating the right parts go ahead and trace over photo like I'm doing now and then you can you can see if he still looks like the character and if he still looks like the character then you know okay I've accentuated the right parts you know I exaggerated the right parts minimalized the right parts distorted the right parts how, you know, whatever techniques you decide to use to develop you know that style of caricature then you know that's how you can test it is by tracing over it and exaggerating the features you want to exaggerate Anyway, so the other course was the, uh, like I said, the hair, and that'd be a big course. And you know, I'd, I'd actually, you know, I show if you if you see any of my courses like Master Human Figure or Master Master the Head, the Human Head, you know that I actually teach. I I don't just go okay and now I'm drawing an eyeball and this is how you this is you just kind of do it like this. You know, I actually go through and show 
how to draw the eyeball, what makes the eye, this is why the eyeball is round here and you know the eye is actually a round thing it's like a like a ball and it's fitting inside this socket and it pushes out this eyelid and so this eyelid has roundness to it all this has roundness to it you know and I show like so there's a grid here you know and, it, there, and it's all round and so this part here has roundness to it it's not flat and and why this lid has a shadow because it it's pulling over the you know the character it's pulling over the eyeball a little bit just like the bottom lid you can see you know it has, it has depth to it comes out and I explain all that in detail that's how I teach so I would you know be teaching something when it also when it comes to the drawing cartoons or whatever it is I decide to teach next so yeah I would actually show everything about drawing hair why hair pulls out where it pulls out from why it falls how it falls how gravity pulls it so that when you have an understanding of hair then you can draw any imaginable hair design because now you have the understanding of how hair looks the way it looks why it looks the way it looks why certain styles look the way those styles look because you understand the fundamentals of it. Once you understand the fundamentals of it, then you can easily draw, you know, any any type of thing you want. And and that's why I'm doing a course right now on on form because it's so important to understand form. Everything has form. And you know, form and dynamic lighting, they go together, kind of a, kind of the same subject really. And when you have all that understanding together and you're able to pull all that knowledge together, you're able to draw things looking a lot more realistically because just because you understand form form is that important. Everything will look better and more realistic just because you have a grasp on form. And so that's why I'm doing form next because it is really the most important thing or form and lighting. Like I said, they're kind of the same subject. They go together. And you know, all this would have shading goes up into the hair. I'm just trying to do something quick here. I don't want to get too detailed but a really fast rendering and you see how much more it looks like Jack Nicholson just because we added that little bit of shadow you know if I were to take my time and really go in and and add more shadows here maybe take about an hour tops you know I can I can make it look really nice within within an hour right so the other courses I had in mind were advanced anatomy now here's one I haven't mentioned yet before in my other videos that I was thinking about doing and the only reason I think about doing this is I think it'd be very popular and you know a lot of people want to know how to do it and uh, probably mostly guys I imagine but anyway that was you know like how to draw porn and the only thing I used to color porn and I don't know it's just I don't really want to do that tutorial because it just seems kinda I don't know cheeky and I don't know I just kinda feel like a sellout because it's not something I really want to do but I think it'd be pretty popular and I think a lot of people would enjoy it I just really don't want to do it so what I might do though is a course on how to draw sexiness so how to draw pinups and stuff um, how, to, how to add that sexiness into your poses how, how to draw the pinups um, how to draw sexy interactions people kissing people making out you know so push that border of sexiness but without going into the nudity and porno and stuff and I would you know I'd keep all my all my people mannequin like you know without genitalia and stuff just because I don't want to go into that porno realm but yeah so let me know what you think about that if you think that is pushing it even too much just doing it and how many of you want to see something like that a uh, course on sexiness and just out of, just out of curiosity and, and be serious don't don't um, make replies that are that are joking around be, be serious with your replies um, how many of you would actually be would be interested in a course on like how to draw porn and then uh, the other one I was thinking about doing is a course on clothing material that would cover everything about clothing from jackets to pants to shoes to gloves to hats and it'd just be a full course you know a full six to ten hour course and materials metal and leather and cloth and silk and how you know how how these things look different and why they look different understanding the why of things is important because once you understand why something looks different why metal looks like metal then you know how to paint metal from your imagination and that's what that's what i like to teach people is how to do it from your imagination um, it's 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 cool to be able to draw from reference and it's kind of fun but I got bored with it very quickly growing up and you know what what I enjoyed a lot was being able to draw from my imagination and when I was able to draw a couple things from imagination like a, like a basic things like a mushroom and stuff I'm like oh this is so awesome this is what I want to be able to do I want to be able to draw anything like this from imagination and so I started learning you know human anatomy and how to draw humans stuff like that from imagination and uh, worked on from there and I'm still working to draw more things from imagination Right, so there we go, and let's go ahead and look at a side-by-side -side comparison here. 
So just by taking him and tracing over and exaggerating certain features, we get a slight characterization of him. Now, of course, we could we could push it farther, um, you know, make the head even larger and make the nose larger and the eyes even more beadier and the mouth bigger. It just depends on what you'd like to exaggerate on him. Um, you can like think of a, a, a you can start with a shape like this, for example, more of a cartoon head shape where you have this big part and then you have this part down here. And so you kind of start with a shape like this and then work from there. So then you're like, okay, have his big cheeks and come down to his mouth, you know, and his chin's big, and then, you know, really just make his head super big and, you know, bring the hair out and come out big. And so it's more of a cartoon kind of shape, and then you have the eyeballs would be in here, and the nose, and it will make the nose really big, and then make this mouth just like really super big, and have the things and come down with the lip. And so this would be like a really cartoon characterization. And you can push it that far if you want to. And you can build off of that what I just did there. And you can easily turn that into a characterization. So hopefully that helps you. And to do, and to do that exercise I think will help a lot is that is to trace photos and you know exaggerate certain features that you think would make the character look, you know, it's not making them look more like the character, you're just exaggerating those features already there and trying to push them further. In this case I pushed his head and hair and his smile a little bit and his eyebrows. And so it still looks like him, so I didn't push things too far. Um, you know, it has that resemblance to him. People will be able, I think be able to tell that was him, at least the younger him, you know. A lot of people know him by how he looks when he's got when he got older, but uh, you know, he looks a little different here when he's younger. But you can kind of see there's a similarity between these photos. So if you knew this guy looked like this right here and you saw this picture, but you probably know it was him. So if you don't push things too far, it'll still retain that likeness. And yeah, so practice like that first, and then after you practice, you know, tracing a, f a few photos and and accentuating the characteristics, and they and they're looking like the characters. Then you go ahead and you can just draw it from just straight up drawing. And, you know, start with sketching and move on from there. And to make sure the things you want to capture are the eyes. The eyes really tell a lot about a character, and that's really a distinguishing mark of people. Their eyes. Make sure you get their nose. Whether you make it bigger or not, make sure you keep the nose looking the same. And so one quick way, this is an interesting thing you could do in Photoshop, is you can go to, let's see if I'm on this layer, go to Filter and Liquify. Let's go to bring this over here so you can see what I'm doing. And so I'm going to grab this uh, tool here. I think this is a tool that makes things smaller, so that's not what I want. Grab the tool that makes things a little bit bigger. Kind of bring this out a little bit bigger. Let's bring his mouth out bigger. And I probably don't want to go that much because it, see it starts to not look like him. So let's kind of make it all bigger. And then we'll take the stretching tool. Let's kind of stretch this out a little bit. Make his smile bigger. Make his chin come down a little bit more. And so this is a tool you can kind of, you can kind of use this to kind of get an idea, you know, to quickly see what would be too much. What is pushing the character too much to where it stops looking like the character. This is the bigger one. Okay, so it's... uh. Let's go ahead and move this over here so I can grab my brush, make it bigger. And let's go ahead and make his whole hair here bigger, his whole head. Now I'm going to grab the stretchy tool. <laughs> yeah, I, I use the technical names. <laughs> so, what if you know were to really go crazy like that? Would that still look like him? And if you push it too much, you can see it might not look so much like him. And you know, you know that this is him because it's an actual photo. But you could um, maybe push it all that much. Let's go back to that and let's push it again. But this time, let's just try to push the head maybe. Just really take that head and go, yeah, I'm going to really push that out. You know, make that head huge. And maybe make his chin and all this a little bit smaller. Make my brush smaller. And then let's just grab, try to grab more of a smile here. And see, so you don't, probably don't want to do the smile too much because then it stops not looking like him. So just making the head big, like that, might be enough. And then you can maybe exaggerate the chin a little bit by when you're drawing it to come down and just kind of draw it like that. So let me go on white, as you can see, and kind of draw the chin coming out more. And so you're not really changing the shape too much, but you're kind of you know pulling that chin out more. Maybe make the smile a little bit bigger, like I did last time. Come out here and you know, come out like that. So you know, like this smile over here, so it's not really changing it too much. And you can see here if you really pull this head out here like that and then have the hair, you know, fitting in here, and it's gonna come way out there, so let's go back to black, I guess. 
like this and coming out you know so the hair would still be wild and everything and that would have a, a bigger you know a more exaggerated characterization and it should still look a lot like the character um, if I were to take all of this right here and draw it really fast so doing that kind of thing and use the liquify tool you can kind of see the boundaries you can push before you destroy the person to where it no longer looks like the person it's just not resemblance and the only resemblance it might have is that they have a really distinguished hairstyle and people wouldn't recognize it from just that or Michael Jackson you can probably push him to such weird strange degrees and people still know Michael Jackson just because of the hat or stance he has as a, as a whole body figure and uh, yeah so that's that hopefully this will help you and this tutorial will, will get you on your way to drawing characterizations I think starting here isn't going to get you to the point you need to be at. So starting by tracing the the photos and exaggerating the parts you want to that you think is with the character, using the liquify tool and then tracing the photo as well, uh, that will help you understand characterization to where you won't push it too far, to where you can, you know, it, it does just help you save a lot of time. Because if you try to skip those those exercises, what's going to happen is you'll be drawing a character and you'll be exaggerating certain parts and you'll think, oh, um, I suck and I just can't get this guy to look like him. You don't think it's your fault, but really it wasn't. You just exaggerated something too much. You just pushed it too far. And by tracing the photo, you know you didn't push it too far. Well, you know you, you, know you drew it right because you're tracing the photo. So you know if you lose his likeness, it's not because of your drawing ability, it's because you, you push the character too far, you exaggerate something too much or something, and that's what made it lose it. And so by doing that, you'll build that confidence knowing that you know what to push and how far to push it and how to keep it re retaining looking like a character. And then you can, you know, draw cool cartoon faces of people on little bodies. And just doing that alone, the big head and little body kind of makes it look like a character anyway. And so you don't have to exaggerate the face too much into where you distort and lose the character. I know a lot of char uh, characters I've seen drawn hardly look anything like the people. And the only ones you really recognize are the, the people are so distinguished, like they have such a distinguished hairstyle or something that you just know, oh, like Einstein, for example. Oh, I know that's Einstein because he has a certain distinguished face. And you can exaggerate that as much as you want and people will still recognize it as Einstein. But if you just take a normal go a normal guy on the street and, you know, like these character caricature drawers on the street, you take a normal dude on the street and you exaggerate his face too much, it looks nothing like the person. And that's the problem is some people just, they take it too far and it, it loses the person. So to keep that personality there, make sure you start with tracing first the, the photos so you know how far you can push people. And that will build up a huge, like, memory bank you know how far you can you can stretch people and exaggerate them before you lose the character and you'll know, you'll kinda of learn on an individual basis what 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 it takes to do that and if you do notice that you you draw a character and it doesn't come out right and doesn't really look like the person and, and you've been doing it for a long time let's say go back and just trace it try try tracing it and, and starting back from the fundamentals and go okay how far can I distort this person use a liquify tool if you have to and see how far you can distort it before it loses it and mess around with a few things and then go ah oh, that's probably what I did wrong that's probably why it doesn't look like the person and then go back and redraw it again by looking at it without tracing it and you would be like ah oh, there we go now I got it and so you know every now and then you might have to go back to the roots like that and, and trace again just to make sure that you know to find out what it is you did wrong what it is that lost the character Okay, so just like art books, you know, there's a, there's pages of text sometimes without no without no drawings, and so too I have to describe some some things sometimes. So it'll be like a lot of talking without any drawings sometimes, but it, I think it's necessary to understand certain concepts. Right, so thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see the you know see the videos that come out because I come out with videos all the time. So if you want to stay up to date on what new tutorials are out, just go and subscribe and you'll be able to see that. Also, you can go to masterpaintingnow.com. And I have a blog there, and um, all my cool tutorials I come out with, I go ahead and post a note on there saying, hey, I came out with a new tutorial. Every now and again, I'll post like a drawing I did or something or some other stuff, uh, some sculpting I did or something on the blog. And yeah, so that's that. And go ahead and uh, leave some comments if you want. Let me know what, uh, in the comments, please let me know what tutorial, not tutorial, what course you would like to see next. And uh, I'm just curious how many people will, will, will seriously say they want a, a porn tutorial or porn course. Uh, you know, like a 10-hour porn course and all about how to draw porn. Because drawing porn is really not as easy as, it might, as, as you might think. You know, drawing those kinds of body body interactions aren't all that easy. And, uh, you know, to be able to learn that kind of stuff is important. But, you know, interactions in general. So the other course, which I might actually do, is just a sexy interaction course and also other interactions. It will be like people, character inter interactions, and focusing heavily on sexual interactions. So kissing and stuff like that, making out, hugging. But not, um, you know, etchy, stuff like this. Uh, pinups, you know, but not, not anything overboard, not like nudity, you know, so the people would be mannequins, there'd be no nipples and stuff like that, and, uh, or maybe, I don't know, 
maybe a little bit of nipples, but n nothing crazy, no vagina or anything like that, no penises. So it'd be just sexual interactions and interactions in general, uh, maybe like people wrestling and you know tackling and fighting and punching. So it'd be some of that too, kind of cover the basis of, of a lot of different kinds of interactions, but focusing heavy on the sexual interactions. And so how many people actually want to see that course? Um, and then, you know, the other courses I mentioned too, which, which one of those courses you want to see, the painting and drawing hair would be all one course, and the materials and clothing, which include, include all clothing from hats to shoes and everything. And um, cartoon course, which, which would include a heavy, a heavy a couple, at least a couple lessons on characterization. And the whole thing would really be also about how to develop your own style, because that's what cartoons are, is, is style. And I, I would actually teach you how to develop your own style, how to develop your unique style. By the time you're done with the course, you, you would probably have already started to develop your own style. I think that would be a pretty cool course to do, actually. An advanced anatomy course, that was the other one. Advanced anatomy would cover like all the muscles, how they overlap, how they go into each other, uh, ligaments that are important, bones, start, we'll start from the skeleton, and so forth, and so it just really helps you really master the human body even more so than my master the human figure. It's like the, ne it's like the next level of that. So, you know, advanced anatomy would be really pretty cool. Um, an advanced perspective course, I'm, I'm, right now with form, form has already come out with all my revelation of perspective to make perspective easy from first to second and third perspective but it doesn't go into super advanced concepts like you know how to draw a car in perspective and stuff like that that would that, be more for an advanced perspective course so that might be something I might do and um, that's all I can think of right now and if I if you can think of a cool oral and a course on landscapes how to draw landscapes so from interior exterior you know how to draw backgrounds of comic books that, that sort of thing all comes down to landscapes so that's another one and if you can think of any other courses that you really want to see go ahead and, and, and speak your voice because the more people that speak the voice the more chances are that that course will come out next and so the you know if I get a bunch of people saying this is the course we want to see then that's probably the course I'll do next if not then I'll just go with what I think is is the coolest and that might be advanced anatomy I'm really leaning toward that right now or the uh, sexual interactions I think that'd be kinda of cool to do um, or cartoons. I think cartoons would be fun too. Okay, thank you for watching. I know I talked so damn long, but hey, whatever. I talk long sometimes. Well, maybe a lot of times.